Uh, good evening, friends. Uh, I'm Anayak Rengan, pediatric surgeon and founder of Search Test. Uh, today, I'm very excited to have with me Dr. Shagun Kapoor. And uh, she is rank one. She has topped the gynec oncology, INIS's entrance exams. So, uh, Shagun, how does it feel? So it feels amazing. I cannot put it into words. This was my dream branch. And finally, I am one step closer towards it. Fantastic. So, Shagun, um, tell us a little bit about your journey. Like, where did you do your UG, PG, and ultimately, why gynec oncology? Yes, sir. So I did my undergrad from Lady Harding Medical College and post-graduation post from Ames Delhi itself. Uh, in my residency, I was um, I used to scrub in gynecoonco cases, and I was actually naturally drawn towards these cases. The surgery was long, but I loved anatomy as a subject, and that's why whenever I was scrubbed in these cases, it was thrilling for me to you know watch how the primary surgeon or the assistant surgeon was you know navigating through the cases and everything. Plus, uh, my guide was from gynecology field, so. Being under mentorship, uh, being under her mentorship, uh, I was, I would say, more academically drawn as well, since my concepts were very crystal clear. And then uh, I tried to do a little bit of research. I tried to attend some conferences of Gynaconco. I found myself that I'm just fitting naturally in the place. Um, because there is a usually, uh, I mean, I love oncology. In fact, uh, even though I'm a pediatric surgeon, in our institute, we do a lot of pediatric surgical onco cases, and it's amazing. Uh, and uh, I totally understand what you feel. But uh, don't you think there might have been some sort of a social pressure? Okay, because, you know, there is apparently there's this thing that, you know, pure obstetrics and or infertility is more, you know, lucrative. And maybe oncology is not so lucrative. So I... No, sir. Actually, I uh, tried I, in our institute. I had my um, one month posting in the infert in, in infertility as well. So I was posted in IVF lab. I did not have a lot of interest in that field. Um, I was not passionate about it in simple terms. I was not passionate about fetal medicine. I loved obstetrics, but I was not passionate about it. So for me, if I'm not passionate about some, something, I would never chase that thing. Gynecoonco was a different uh, subject altogether for me. The pre-op care, the post-op care, the monitoring, everything associated associated with it was something which actually sparked something inside me. Absolutely, absolutely. And I and I totally agree with you. If you're not passionate about it, there's no point in chasing it. Yes, sir. Tell us about your academic journey. Like, um, when did you finish your uh, MSOBG? And uh, did you work while studying or did you take a break to study? Like, how did mm -hmm. this go about Yes, sir. So uh, I completed my senior resid uh, sorry, junior residency in Jan 2024. And after that, I started my senior residency. I cleared the senior residency exam of AIMS itself. And then for one year, I continued my senior residency, more than a year. And uh, after securing rank in NEET, I, I only had 20 days left for my INI. So I did not see any point in continuing my SRship. And then I resigned in May, just 20 days before my INI just to solely focus on this exam. I was studying beside, I was studying in my senior residency only. I did not have much time otherwise. So like, uh, how hectic was it? Where, how many hours of preparation were you able to put in every day? So I would you like to say one rank in ETSs as well. You secured a rank of 11 in ETSs as well. So, yes, sir. Uh, I mean, congrats to you for that as well. Yes, sir. Thank so, you so much. Like, how did you manage time with a pretty hectic SR ship? So, yes, yeah, so in SR ship in AIMS, we have 24, 36 hours duty as well. Like it's uh, even if we are doing a non-academic SR ship, I used to go to library, study for three, four hours on my hectic days. I have a habit of doing MCQs while I'm working, while the patient is being shifted from the OT to the OT away from the OT. I just go through the notes or just 10 MCQs for that matter. So I think that actually helped me in the long run. And plus, in my junior residency itself, I was very thorough with my subjects. Uh, I read Williams. I read uh, Beric, and, Beric and Novak's for gynecology, Thielen's for operative gynecology, areas, and all those subjects. So that was a major benefit for me because that way my concepts were clear and it took me a lesser amount of time you know, to crack this exam. And then I was, and then in INI, they all, always repeat a lot of previous year questions. So that is my one advice to all the students here, that please go through the previous year questions and 
you know please don't ignore them and all those things so that is very important absolutely absolutely so i think uh, your advice makes a lot of sense so how what is the role which sarshtas mcqs played in your preparation yes sir so uh, there is one thing that a lot of apps are not providing with targeted gynec oncology mcqs that's what i've realized since it's a recent branch it came in 2017 mcq came in 2017 so search test i took the gynec oncology question mark and i took the neat test series as well because i thought if i'm not able to read the entire gyne- obstetrics and gynecology for neat i can at least go through the mcqs i loved the oncology bank because it was so precise uh, the explanations were not very lengthy you can easily finish a bank in a day also i think in one day or two three days if you've read the topic it's not that you're doing thousand of mcqs they have 100 mcqs for a topic and all those things True, true, so true. that way it really helped me. Fantastic. So Shagun, um, what are your plans after this? Like, uh, what do you plan to do? Uh, you want to be a gynec oncologist? You want to practice in Delhi, or you wish to be in an academic atmosphere, or is it a corporate setting? What do you plan to I'm do? I'm not decided yet, sir. Actually, uh, I love. I don't think I am someone who can leave the academics that easily, but it's a long shot. I'm not decided. I really don't have the answer to that question. Great, 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 great. Hey, Shagun, thank you so much for uh, talking to us. I think it's been a pretty illuminating uh, uh, thing. But uh, one last thing is, what advice would you want to give students who are preparing for kind of oncology? What yes, techniques? Uh, how how many MCQs to solve per day? Uh, if you can condense that information, I think that's going to be super useful to the students who are going to be super inspired by you. Yes, sir. So. So there are two exams you're targeting. You have to be very clear whether you're targeting NEET SS or INSS. I was always targeting INSS. I got a rank in NEET because probably there were fifty oncology questions in the first part this time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you're targeting oncology for AIMS, you have to read Berek and Hassel. मतलब you have to read it at least twice. I read it twice because okay. if mm-hmm. you can, if twice and thrice I was going. Thrice was the time when I was actually flipping the pages, doing the revision. I was sure that I know this chapter, I know the concepts. Then you have to go through all the guidelines: ESCO, ESCO, NCCN. It's optional, but it would be really, but it would be really, you know, it will give you that extra edge if you go through the guidelines. Uh, you have to read the guidelines five times, six times. I tell this to everyone. There is no point in reading the guideline once or twice. You will not understand what they are trying to say. You have to approach the MCQs or uh, try to do previous year MCQs first. If you are someone who does not like doing a lot of MCQs, because that's a targeted way of you know Absolutely. approaching Makes sense. this mm-hmm. thing, and then give grand tests. I am not a very big fan of giving grand tests because sometimes I feel it makes it, I get demotivated after that. But giving at least four to five grand tests in a month—that's the basic that you need to give that. Absolutely, so, absolutely. I think what you said makes a lot of sense. um the only uh, thing i would like to add on to this to students who are preparing it is like make it a habit to solve mcqs as much as possible especially if you're working and uh, that's something which i tell you the search as users yes, i tell you that you know the app is user friendly so you know if you have like 10 minutes solve over 10 mcqs you can mm-hmm. complete that question bank very easily matlab i want to tell it to people it it if you love oncology as a subject you will love doing those questions and till the time you don't do questions that concept is not going to be crystal clear clear in your mind does not matter how many times you are cramming that subject or those pages you have to solve mcqs and sometimes you you know some associated mcq will come in the exam and yeah. you will be thanking yourself that yes it was very useful or fruitful in the long run absolutely absolutely Yeah, uh, thanks, Shagun. I think what you said makes a lot of sense. Uh, uh, and whatever you said is 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 pretty much achievable, is what I feel. It's not it's not something which is you know out of the blue. And you were able to yes, do sir. this while not preparing full time. You're working in a busy SRship, and I I literally know. I've spoken to people. I literally know how busy your ops guy in SRship at AIMS can be. And yes, I think sir. you've done amazingly well for that. Uh, you deserve every bit of credit. um uh, wishing you really really well from the entire searchless family thank you so much thank sir. you so much sir yeah. thank you so much sir